In today's video, we're going to be taking a big look at the tropics as we've been doing for the past couple of months as we've been in the hurricane season. We're going to dive into that upcoming pattern and also as kind of like a special bonus, we're going to be taking a look at our winter analogs. It's been months and months since we've talked about this, but I want to go over those and see what history tells us this upcoming winter may be like. And that's probably why most of you are watching this video as it's in the title and thumbnail. But we're going to be taking a deep dive into that in just a little bit. Now, before we get into things, be sure to check out Prestige Weather in the description and pinned comment down below. We do early access to all of our monthly and seasonal outlooks. We have had a recent big project going on in there, so that has kind of delayed my winter forecast. But that is coming very soon to there, where we will be releasing the third winter forecast early within that community. So if you want early access to it, be sure to check it out in the description and pinned comment down below. It's only $5 a month insanely affordable and you get crazy perch with it as well very cool be sure to check it out let's get into the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook as you can see we have two tropical disturbances out there that are potentially going to develop we see one here in the gulf of mexico and this one just like we saw yesterday has a 30 percent chance of development over the next 48 hours same thing over the next seven days 30 percent chance as we take a look here at our higher chance, higher probability disturbance here over the next 48 hours, we see a high 70% chance and then a over the next seven days, an 80% chance of development. So we do expect this one to develop. We're certainly going to be watching for it here over the next seven days and daily. We're going to be looking at this, of course. Let's just take a look at this upcoming pattern, a couple of recent developments. By the time we take a look at this afternoon time frame, what we're going to see is a storm system moving onshore to the northwest. So we see a 994 moving onshore there. Kind of rhyming, but that is what it is. A 994 millibar low pressure center moving onshore there to the Pacific Northwest. Bringing rainfall, as you can see, to California, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. We do have some showery activity associated with our low that is within this trough we have a lot of cold air pouring into the eastern united states and this is bringing some dreary weather with it as well as you can see let's keep going i want to take us to tomorrow afternoon and this is going to be for wednesday uh, october 11th and what we end up seeing is that this low has now transferred over here to colorado and we do see plenty of snowfall happening for states like idaho montana wyoming here utah and even down into Colorado, we're seeing snowfall developing. Still heavy rainfall for all of the northwest, though. The southeast here, we see some tropical activity with that lower chance probability. This is either tropical or non-tropical. We've talked about that before. And just like I said before, if you missed those videos, this is going to bring impacts either way. So I don't want people to focus too much on the tropical aspect of this. And I think it should be much more of a focus on the fact that there is going to be some major impacts regardless if this is tropical or not. It's still going to be an impactful situation. Now, let's keep going. And as we reach Thursday afternoon, it's going to be October 12th. We see this low has developed down to a 989 millibar low pressure center. We're still seeing plenty of Rocky Mountain snowfall and even some more medium elevation snowfall, I would call it. So not only the mountaintops, but also into those higher elevation valleys that aren't necessarily the tops of the mountains, but they're not the bottoms either. Um, and we're seeing a lot of this for multiple states. We also see some thunderstorm activity or heavier shower activity here along the warm front portion of this low. So that is worth mentioning as well as we see something like this is the dynamic here with our low right here. So warm front here, cold front a little bit underneath, and we're going to see this really develop over the next 24 hours here as we reach Friday. This is kind of showing us exactly what the dynamic is here. We have this cold front swinging down just like this, still a warm front up above. So we see warm air surging to the northward in the eastern United States for the day on Friday, October 13th here. And we see cooler air pouring in behind here. This is exactly what we're seeing. Now, as we reach Saturday, on October 14th, we see that this one has now moved into the eastern United States. Cold front reaching all the way down into the Gulf of Mexico. Warm front a little bit less um, impactful at this point. We're definitely seeing a lot of cold air pouring in behind this low in general. So expect colder times ahead, especially for Saturday, Sunday, Monday time frame. Here's going to be um, Sunday, if we can get this to load. Here we go. So 
by the time we're reaching Sunday afternoon, this low has now moved offshore. Notice that the nor'easter kind of slides offshore now as opposed to riding directly up the coast. So we were seeing something more like this track on the left. Now we're seeing something more like the track on the right. And this would help out a lot to lessen those major impacts for the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. So we can all have our fingers crossed for this type of a solution. Certainly would be the less impactful situation um, as that is gonna bring just overall less with it. We do see that over the Northwest, we're seeing showery and stormy activity, Washington, Oregon, California, Nevada, Idaho, and Montana there. Uh, and then again, within this trough, just like our first one, we are seeing that dreary showery weather within it. So that is gonna be uh, certainly playing a role. Monday the 16th here, what we see is another storm system moving on shore to the Northwest. Washington, Oregon, California, Idaho, and Montana again seeing precipitation from this. Again, note we still see this dreary weather in the Northeast, Ohio Valley, and Great Lakes. Let's move this towards Tuesday, the 17th, and it's a lot of the same. We do see this low kind of is further north than our original one. So South Dakota is where this one's centered, more exclusive snowfall for the north as opposed to areas like Colorado and Utah, even down into New Mexico. They're kind of being left out in this case, but the northern Rockies seeing some snowfall from this. And by the time we reach Wednesday, we see an interesting thing happening. We see that a lot of the low pressure has transferred further south, and we do get some brief snowfall further down south in the Rockies as that takes place. And then by the end of it, look at what we're seeing Thursday, the 19th of October. We see this low up here in Canada, but look at this stretching cold front down through the United States, and we end up seeing a lot of cold air again wanting to push through. We're seeing the surging warmth out ahead of it, but these warm ups are much shorter lived than the cool downs. So, overall, I would say over the next 10 days, expect colder times for a majority of that whole time frame. Now, the total precipitation, no surprise, we've seen a decrease in the amount significantly here for the Northeast and Mid Atlantic. Again, that's going to depend on track. We still see plenty for Pennsylvania, the Delmarva, up through New Jersey, and even into New York City and Long Island. But any further north than that, we're seeing pretty minimal amounts. So if this low doesn't ride up the coast, we're going to see significant differences in the overall impacts. The Northwest seeing a lot here. The plains through into the upper Midwest and Great Lakes, as well as the Ohio Valley is seeing a lot. And then all along that Gulf Coast as well, we're seeing above average amounts. So plenty of precipitation to go around here is what I would say. The temperature pattern, we're obviously cooler than normal right now. We are going to see this brief warm up start around Friday time frame, like I said. But look at Saturday, Sunday time frame. We're already back here. This is Sunday. We're already back to seeing a lot of colder air here for the eastern half of the nation overall. Warmth prevailing here along the western seaboard. As we keep going here, we end up seeing the cold is just lingering all the way through the end of the model run. So overall, colder air. It's not as potent here, but we see this strong positive PNA still prevailing. So this is going to continue to send cooldowns into the eastern United States until this positive PNA comes to an end. As promised, let's get into those analogs. Firstly, the temperatures. We're looking at December to February 2009 to 2010, 2014 to 2015, and 2004 to 2005. We are going to be updating these analogs as these are the ones that we've been using for a couple of months. But I do want to update these based on surface, sea surface temperatures. I don't know why I said surface twice, but based on the sea, surface uh, temperatures of the ocean, we're going to be seeing some changes perhaps in this upcoming, but according to our original analogs, very cold in the east, very congruent with what we saw on our winter forecast. And then this positive PNA that we're seeing right now would be around December to February as well, which again would send these cool down southward for the east. So as of now, we are seeing some validation as we're seeing this currently. We're only a couple of months away from winter, so it's not far fetched to to think that we could see a pattern like this just a couple months from now. So there is evidence to suggest that. As we take a look at the precipitation, we see the Southwest in particular is an area to watch for above average precipitation and then up the East Coast here. So I'm gonna do an up arrow for the above average here. So let's do this. And then the Northwest and some areas in the interior Eastern United States are experiencing below average amounts. So we see these different areas seeing these things going to do that there this is the overall look on the precipitation i know it's kind of all over the place but i think the most important thing to note is that during an el nino we could experience these nor'easter storms which is the east coast especially the more 
uh, coastal areas, best chance at seeing snowfall. So this is all good news for you coastal folks if you're hoping for snowfall. Anyway, we upload every single day. Be sure to subscribe for daily weather videos just like this one. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.